Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I've got a quick tip for you around masking and specifically it's around linear gradients and why I think a linear gradient ought to be a key tool in your masking arsenal and perhaps the most uh, useful tool in your masking arsenal. And that's because it just gives you an incredible amount of flexibility when you're blending scenes together. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got a photo here. Now I've already done a couple of things in develop and I've removed a bunch of spots. That was it before and there it is now. But you have a scene like this and you might think, hey, you know what I wanna do? I wanna slightly darken the sky because of course that's where the light source is, therefore it's brighter than the rest of the photo. And I, uh, so I wanna slightly darken that. And the water, I kinda wanna slightly lighten that because it's a little bit too dark. It's a little bit uh, more in shadow. And so maybe there's a little bit of imbalance, let's say. So what you might do is you go into develop and you go to masking. And I think what you might normally think is, hey, I'm gonna use mask AI. It's just easy, it's quick, it automatically identifies stuff in a photo. So let's click and see what it does because it does identify stuff automatically. It saves you time. And generally speaking, it does a really good job and it's useful, but it's not always the perfect tool for the job. And that's why it's so great to have multiple tools at your disposal. So in this case, if I wanna select water, I click on water and you know what? It pretty much nails it, right? The thing is, it, it's got a little bit up above over here on this bank, but honestly, it's, it's done a fine job. And so if I wanted to brighten this area, I would go over here to adjustments and I would click brighten and I'd start pulling that up, let's say a half a stop. And here's the, the challenge, I guess is the word, with doing it this way and that is, um, what's happening is uh, there's no gradual fade or anything like that of this adjustment. It's just, it's like you get the full adjustment and then you get no adjustment. There's not a gradient zone, which is where I'm going with this discussion about linear gradients. And so in other words, it just goes and goes and you get the same amount. It's a consistent amount, exposure bump of 0.57. It's 0.57 everywhere. And what I don't really like about that in this situation is this area is in shadow, but it's too bright. Like the water looks good. I like the water like that, but it's too bright up here. And so having that mass that's exactly equal everywhere without any graduated fade into that bank on the other side doesn't really look that good. So what I prefer to do is use a linear gradient. So let me just make sure mask AI is off. It is. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm going to click and drag and the great, great thing about linear gradients, of course, is that gradient part that I'm referring to, which is this gradient zone here. You get 100% of your adjustment down below, and then it gradually starts fading from that first line through to that middle line on into that top line. And so you can increase or decrease the amount of that gradient zone, which means you get a really gradual fade of your adjustment into the photo, which means it looks natural and that's what we're going for here. And so I would pull this down a little bit. I would fade that into that far area. And then in my adjustments, I think it was at 0.57. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Uh, there we go, 0.57. And here I've got a better fade. Uh, actually I have a fade. I didn't even have a fade when I was using Mask AI. And so nothing wrong with Mask AI. It's great at identifying stuff. The challenge is there's no gradient edge to it. And so this gives you the ability to fade that adjustment 100% of that 0.57 increase in the bottom, and it starts to fade into that area of shadow, which means that continues to look a bit more natural and realistic. And so that's why I think it's so important. And I want to show you another example on this same photo. I'll open develop again. I'll go into mask and mask AI. And this time we're going to work on the sky. And so again, it does a pretty good job of nailing the sky. It missed a little bit over here, uh, but the trick or the challenge really is it doesn't do such a great job behind these trees. And so if I come in and say, hey, I want to drop the exposure, you know, if I only do a little bit, that's fine. And, and to be fair, I would probably only do a little bit. But I want to point out when you start dragging it a little bit more, the greater the amount of your adjustment, the greater you're gonna see the kind of the issue there around the edges of the mass. So I'm gonna go really dark just to show this. Obviously I wouldn't edit like this, but you're gonna see this halo along these edges uh, and that's across the entire edge. And that's because the mask, uh, mask AI doesn't have a gradual edge. It has a hard edge. It, it identifies the object and it stops. And then after that, it's not a uh, part of the mask, right? And so that area gets, 
100% everywhere across the entire portion of the photo, and it doesn't really always work. And so again, linear gradient, much better idea here. So I'm going to get out of Mask AI, and I'm going to go get a linear gradient, and I just want to drag this in here, and I want to do that same gradual fade that I talked about already, and slide that down into here, and adjust accordingly. And what you end up getting is the gradual fade that I'm talking about, but a much more natural and subtle blend to the image. So you can see the mask, 100% of this adjustment's gonna go up above, and then from that top line through the middle line onto the bottom, it starts fading to where it eventually gets to zero. And that's how you get that nice, subtle, and smoother blend, even at much, much darker adjustments. I'm not getting that halo around the edges because there's that gentle, soft, gradual fade at the edges. So again, I wouldn't go that dark, but I would go, you know, here's a stop or so, and that looks a lot better than it did with using the Sky Mask AI at a similar exposure decrease. The other thing too here that I think works is that because it's darker and it fades here, meaning there's less adjustment here, uh, kind of closer to the horizon, I think it looks more natural because you would expect it to be darker up there and perhaps brighter down here, closer to the horizon where the sun is kind of hitting and kind of playing across it. So that is how and why I use linear gradients so much actually in place of Mask AI, despite the fact that Mask AI does a good job of identifying things, it just doesn't have that gradient edge, that gradual fade, and so your results can be more noticeable, which means they're not as natural and they're not as subtle. You can get a better controlled edit doing it this way. Hope it helps, my friends. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Until next time, adios.